All right, if you're watching this video, you probably have some understanding of what synthetic division is and how it works. And maybe you're just curious about a case where, you know, you get a remainder that isn't equal to zero. And that's what I'm gonna go through with you right here. So spoiler alert, when you divide this polynomial by this binomial, you will get a remainder that is not equal to zero. So if that's what you're here for, let's get started. But first, do me a favor and synthetically divide that like button if you are loving not using polynomial long division for problems like this. All right, so as you may know, the first step in any synthetic division problem is drawing one of these random L bracket chart things. And our goal here is to fill in this chart with some information. And so the first piece of information we need is gonna come from our dividend, and that's gonna be the coefficients of the polynomial that we're dividing. So in this case, we have two, five, negative four, and negative five. And I'm just gonna take those coefficients and I'm just gonna write them in the top row of my little L bracket chart thing. Okay, so I've got my two, I've got a five, I've got my negative four and I have a negative five at the end here. Okay, so that's the, the first step. Now the second piece of information we need is going to come from our divisor. And specifically, what we wanna do is take that divisor and we wanna set that divisor equal to zero. And we wanna find the X value that makes that divisor equal to zero. Okay, so just applying some simple algebra here, I'm gonna bring that one over to the other side and I'm gonna find that X is equal to negative one. All right, so that's gonna be the second piece of information that I need for my chart. I'm gonna place that right up here on the outside. Now, the next step in the synthetic division process is that we're gonna take that first coefficient of two and we're gonna bring it down underneath and just write it underneath our chart right here. We're gonna take that coefficient of two and we're gonna multiply it by the value that made our divisor equal to zero, which was negative one. And we're gonna place the result of that multiplication right here underneath the second coefficient. So underneath that five, I'm gonna put whatever two times negative one is. So we know that two times negative one is gonna be negative two. So I'm gonna place that right here. Now the next thing I wanna to do to start completing my table is I wanna add straight down this column. I wanna add five plus negative two. And I'm gonna place that result directly below. So five plus negative two, I know is gonna be three. So I'm gonna place the three right there. Now that's really the whole synthetic division process. The rest is just gonna be repeating it until we get to the end of our table. So I'm gonna take that three, I'm gonna multiply by negative one, and I'm gonna place the result underneath the next coefficient in my table. So I'm gonna put a negative three here because three times negative one is negative three. And just like in the last step, I wanna add straight down and place the result underneath. Okay, so negative four plus negative three is negative seven. I'm gonna repeat this process one more time. So I'm gonna take that negative seven, multiply by negative one. I'm gonna get seven. I'm gonna place the result right here. And I'm gonna add straight down to get two. All right, so that's really it for the synthetic division process. But what have we done here? <laughs> well, we've created a bunch of random numbers, but as it turns out, these numbers are a lot less random than you might think. In fact, they end up being the coefficients on the quotient that we get when we divide our polynomial up here by our binomial of x plus one. So I'm just gonna write these first three numbers here and we'll get to this little two here in just a moment. The first three numbers I'm gonna use as my coefficients of my quotient. So since I took a cubic and I divided it by a binomial with degree one, I know that my quotient is gonna have a power that is one less than my dividend, which was a cubic. So my quotient will be an expression of degree two. That's one degree less than my dividend, which was a cubic. So that first term is gonna be my x squared term, and I'm just gonna work my way down, decreasing my power by one each time to create a quotient that is a trinomial of degree two. So you can see I have two x squared plus three x minus seven. And we could put a x to the power of zero here just to illustrate that we're decreasing by one each time here, but I'm not gonna do that because I wanna keep things nice and clean. All right, so that's gonna be my quotient. When I take this polynomial, divide by that binomial, I get this trinomial. But there is a catch here, and that's why you're watching this video. What is going on with this two? Well, this two right here is actually going to be our remainder. And I wanna show you a way that we can communicate that remainder without just kind of leaving it hanging there. Now to do that, what I've done is I've just taken our problem and I've rewritten it a little differently. What this says down here is I've got my dividend of that cubic expression and I'm dividing it by my divisor of x plus one. That's the same thing as what I have up here. All right, just represent it a little bit differently so that I can show you what we're gonna do with this remainder. Now, when I performed this division, I ended up with a trinomial of two x squared plus three x minus seven. But I need to consider that remainder in some way. Now the way that we do that is we're gonna add our remainder of two, but we're also gonna divide it by our divisor of x plus one. Now this should feel confusing because it kind of is. Let me show you why this makes sense. Imagine for a second that I took this divisor of x plus one and I multiplied it up to the other side of the equation, the right side of the equation. Now what you would see happening here is we would have that original trinomial 
with our divisor of x plus one multiplied since we multiplied it up to the other side, okay? But what's gonna happen to this awkward term at the end here? Well, since I'm multiplying the entire right side by x plus one, well, that x plus one in the denominator is gonna cancel out. And what I'm gonna be left with is my remainder of two being added at the end of my expression. Now let's talk about what this whole expression says. This tells me that when I performed my division, I ended up with an expression at the end that's going to be equivalent to my original dividend. Now in the interest of time, I'm not gonna do this in this video, but if I were to take this binomial of x plus one and multiply each term into the set of brackets here, collect all my like terms, collect that remainder of two at the end, what you would see is that we do in fact get that original dividend back again. And that should make sense. If I take that dividend and divide it by this divisor, I get that expression with a remainder at the end. So this line right here at the end is how a lot of teachers like to see the result of a polynomial long division problem or a synthetic division problem that has a remainder. We wanna see an expression that indicates what that original expression is equal to that includes the remainder. So you really don't have to show, you know, this intermediate step here. This is really that end result that we're looking for after performing that synthetic division. Now, synthetic division does save you time and costly errors, but it does take practice, which is why you're going to want to head over to this video next, and I will see you there.